Hallo Leute und willkommen zurück zu The Cat Lady. Ja, was soll ich sagen, eine sehr, sehr heikle Situation. Unsere Susan ist leider in die Situation geraten. Ja, ich weiß jetzt immer noch nicht, ist das Nachbar oder sind das völlig andere Menschen hier? Auf jeden Fall ein totales Psychopärchen. Ähm, hat sich an Susan vergriffen, sie gefangen gehalten, wollten mit denen noch, mit ihr wahrscheinlich noch viel mehr machen. Dann wurde ihr leider Lauge ins Gesicht geschüttet und ähm, ja, und jetzt ist ihr Gesicht hinüber. Und ähm, jetzt haben wir noch eine Pistole, da Susan nicht sehen kann, bleibt uns wahrscheinlich nichts anderes übrig, als, ja, als uns selber die Kugel zu geben. Und ich will es eigentlich gar nicht wahrhaben. Ich, äh, ich hoffe ja immer noch irgendwie die ganze Zeit, dass wir was anderes machen können. Aber ich erschieße sie jetzt, weil ich habe keine Ahnung, was wir sonst tun sollen, was grauenvoll ist. Also... Ich kenne kein Spiel, in dem man die Option, die einzige Option hat, sich selber zu erschießen. Aber okay, wir werden es wohl leider tun müssen. Und ich schaue dann mal, was passiert. I'm sorry, Mitzi. I have to break my promise. Okay, wir sind tot. Und jetzt? Können wir was machen? Können wir was machen oder nicht? Unsere Inventarleiste erscheint wieder. Also ich kann gerade nichts machen. Ich warte jetzt einfach mal. Äh, sind wir das? Ach, das ist äh, die Mizi, ne? Okay. Hope you don't mind creepy posters. It's your room. You can do what you like with it. But I definitely prefer this to fairies, rainbows and pink unicorns. Did you make these? No. My boyfriend made them. Some of them anyway. So, Miss Ashworth, I happen to have a bottle of wine in my bag. I was going to leave it to Robert, but I forgot all about it. Robert? The guy with the rats? Oh, yes. Of course. So, shall we have a drink, then? We could get to know each other a bit more. I know, I promise I won't get in the way. And, I mean, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. But since we're going to live together for a little while... Ich bin ein bisschen irritiert. Sind wir jetzt doch wieder zurück? Ist das alles gar nicht passiert? Ich blicke nicht durch, wahrscheinlich auch nicht so wirklich. Aber da wir jetzt wieder zurück sind in unserer Wohnung mit Mizi oder Mieze oder wie auch immer wie, wie sie nennen, äh, denke ich, ist es okay, glaube ich. Sind Sie sicher, dass Sie in Ihrem Zustand trinken können? Ich sag mal, es ist okay. Ja, yeah, das ist okay, I guess. Great. I'll bring the wine. One of those bottles with a cork. Have you got a bottle opener, Miss Ashworth? In the kitchen. I'll go get it, shall I? Yes, please. No, the cork is here. there, could you get a couple of glasses too? Ja, der cork is here. Ich erinnere mich dran. Der war oben im Schrank. Okay, ich weiß, ich weiß nicht. Wir sind wieder zurück. Ich meine, das ist für mich äh, positiv. Als, äh, weiß ich nicht. Vielleicht hat sie das ja auch nur geträumt oder so. Dann war das aber schon ein heftig kranker Scheißtraum. Also, ähm. Pf, ja. Pf, ja. Okay, gucken wir mal in den Schrank. Da ist er. Nimm den Korkens hier. Ja. 
So, und dann gehen wir noch äh, und holen Gläser. Ich glaube, die sind in dem anderen Schrank. Nimm Weingläser. Wunderbar. Eins für mich, eins für Mizi. Okay. Sehr schön. Ja, dann werden wir uns jetzt mal einen schönen Abend machen. Nach dem äh, kranken Scheiß. Das muss ja auch... Ach nee, wir wollen ja ins Gästezimmer. Oder wollen wir in die Stube oder wie? Wo sind wir denn jetzt? Sind wir bei ihr? Ja, wir sind immer noch bei ihr. So, dann wollen wir mal reden. Reden. Have you found that Corkscrew yet? Ja. We also need some wine glasses. Habe ich auch. Guck. There you go. Let's get that bottle open. Yeah. But we'll need glasses too. See if you can find some. Habe ich doch schon. I found some wine glasses. All right. That's all we need. Oh, Miss Ashworth, I really must say this before we start. Yeah? I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Very funny, Mitzi. Oh, no, I mean it. That's fine. But just so you know, I always sleep with my eyes open. Also, das große K, willst du drüber reden? Oh, es regnet gar nicht mehr. Wie hast du vor, diesen Typ zu finden? Also ich sag mal erstmal, es regnet gar nicht mehr. Oh, it's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once, when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? Ich habe nie eins gesehen, niemand hat eins gesehen. Die einzigen Monster sind wir, Mörder, Vergewaltiger, Brandstifter. Vielleicht hast du recht, ich glaube an sie, wenn ich eins sehe. Hm. Die einzigen Monster sind wir. The only monsters are us. Murderers, rapists, arsonists. They're the real beasts. So far from humanity, they're no longer capable of feeling compassion or guilt. They're the ones we should really be afraid of. But whether they're lurking in the woods or fog or the darkness of our cellars, it's all irrelevant. You can't predict what happens. You can't do anything to stop it. There is only one way. You turn into a beast yourself. And like them, you show no mercy. Whoa! Where did that come from, Miss Ashworth? I just don't like murderers. They're nothing but... Parasites. Mhm, das hat sich selber gesagt. Also, das große K, willst du drüber reden? Ja, wie hast du vor, diesen Typ zu finden? How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. I never really cared about them. They changed over the years, too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face, you give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall, and you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well, there's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. What does he do for a living? I think he's a train driver. I can't imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, that's good. Leaves us with just six. 
Anyone else you know? I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I have plenty of time. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. I could draw a simple map of the building, and with your help, mark down who lives where? Sounds good to me, Mitzi. Also, das große K, willst du drüber reden? So, the big C. Want to talk about it? Wieso denn C? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do. Before my time is up. It's fine. You see more so, right. Um it's just... Okay. I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Haha. <laughs> yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphoma, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm, you might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah, and yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah, not awfully long. Is there anything... They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Do you want to talk about something else? It's auch echt harter Tobak. Also, dass die jetzt auch Krebs hat. Aber ich finde es schön, dass die beiden darüber versuchen, ein wenig zu reden. Also, dass sie sich beide einfach langsam etwas mehr öffnen und naja, ich kann mir vorstellen, dass Mizi auch möchte, dass Susan sich noch mehr öffnet und erzählt. Vielleicht wird es ja am Ende auch Susan helfen, dass da jemand ist, der sie, dass, ja, dass da überhaupt jemand war, ihr Vertrauen ein bisschen gegeben und bekommen hat und so dieses sich nicht mehr alleine fühlen. Aber ich hoffe auch, dass es nicht schlecht endet, weil ähm, Mizis Tage ja quasi gezählt sind. Also das könnte Susan natürlich auch irgendwo wieder runterziehen, da gerade wieder jemanden gefunden zu haben, jemanden, an den sie sich hätte ein bisschen binden und, und vertrauen können und dann verschwindet derjenige wieder, das ist natürlich auch übel. Aber ich gehe mal weiter im Text. Du erwähntest einen Freund, erzähl mir etwas mehr über ihn. You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. He's dead. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just don't know where to start. Hm. Erzähl mir, wie ihr zwei euch kennengelernt habt. Wie hat er die Neuigkeiten mit deinem Krebs aufgenommen? Jack hat diese Bilder an deiner Wand gemacht. War er ein Künstler? Wie ist er gestorben? Ich frag mal nach seinen Bildern. Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films, but I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog. Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there is a certain 
indescribable beauty and sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. <laughs> yeah, um, erzählt mir, wie ihr zwei ich kennengelernt habt. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. Perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. Hmm. Wie hat er die Neuigkeiten mit deinem Krebs aufgenommen? How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. Then he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. But it was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. But I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack. And it was destroying him as well. He changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about. Even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. Sehr bewegend, also ich lese immer viel mit und hoffe, dass es für euch nicht zu viel Dialog ist und nicht langweilig ist, aber ich finde es echt sehr, sehr intensiv und, und so real und ich finde, man kann sich das richtig bildhaft vorstellen. Also es ist ganz toll, finde ich, ausgedrückt und dargestellt. Man kann sich diese Beziehung zwischen den beiden sehr gut vorstellen. Wie ist er gestorben? How did he die? How did Jack die? so distant in the last few weeks before, before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly, but it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know, about all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions, everything really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. Or rather, he found him. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the eye of Adam is an advocate of death. He dwells on human weakness. His job is to plant an idea, to give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it, once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. 
It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals, which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, and he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance. But it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I love most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, I already knew it was. When I arrived at our special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old parking lot. But to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day I've never gone there again. Aber jetzt jetzt ist sie da und ich werde jetzt leider gleich einen Cut machen müssen. Es ist immer noch alles sehr bewegend. Sehr bewegend und sehr traurig. Also sie konnte ihren Freund nicht aufhalten, was ja total bitter ist. Echt schlimm. Oh, und da ist das Gas drin. Ne? Oh, heftig. Das ist echt heftig. Also sie konnte ihn nicht aufhalten. Sie ist hingegangen zum Parkplatz und dann hat er sich da drinnen quasi vergast und ist gestorben. Also das, das ist echt hart. Oh, ich weiß gar nicht, was ich dazu sagen soll. Es ist ein bisschen traurig gerade, aber ich werde trotzdem leider einen Cut machen müssen. Wir sehen uns im nächsten Part von The Cat Lady und ich hoffe, mh, dass es noch irgendwo einen, einen positiven Hoffnungsschimmer für Susan und Mizi gibt. Also das, das, was ja schon mal positiv ist, ist, dass beide ihre Geschichten haben oder dass, be dass beiden schlecht geht und beide aber nicht alleine sind. Vielleicht, vielleicht ist das ja so ein bisschen der Hoffnungsschimmer zu wissen, man ist gerade nicht alleine. Aber wie gesagt, ist es halt auch echt bitter zu wissen, dass Mizi eh sterben wird und dass sie einfach todkrank ist. Und auch dann hoffe ich, dass Susan noch weiter irgendwie noch leben will oder dass, ich weiß nicht, ob sie am Ende ihr Leben ändern wird, ob es schöner für sie werden wird oder ob selbst Susan am Ende tot sein wird. Ich habe keine Ahnung, was in diesem Spiel noch auf uns wartet, aber es würde mich sehr freuen, wenn ihr mit mir zusammen dieses, ja, diese Geschichte noch weiter durchlebt. Wir sehen uns im nächsten Part. Bis dann.